In this video, we'll learn about the process for graphing polynomials. Here's the basic idea. First, we want to identify the degree and the leading coefficient of the polynomial. Then we'll want to use that information to determine the end behavior. Next, we'll want to factor the polynomial if necessary. Sometimes the polynomial will be given to us already factored. And then determine the roots and their multiplicities. Using that information, we want to determine whether the graph crosses or touches the x-axis at each root. And then finally, this will be enough information for us to get a rough sketch of the graph. Okay, so let's start with the end behavior. So here we have a generic polynomial. So a n x to the n, a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1. The number n, the highest power of x appearing in our polynomial, that's called the degree of the polynomial. And then a sub n, the coefficient of that highest power of x term, that's called the leading coefficient. And the end behavior of our polynomial talks about what happens when x gets really large, either a really large positive number or a really large negative number. And it turns out that when x is really large, that leading term, the a sub n, x to the n, that dominates the behavior of the polynomial. So the graph of y equals f of x, even though there's all this other stuff here, it turns out that all that stuff isn't nearly as important as this first leading term. If we know what that does when x is really large, then that tells us what the whole polynomial does. Let's look at an example. So we've got the polynomial negative 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus x minus 12. And we want to know what happens as x goes to infinity. In other words, what happens when x becomes a really, really big positive number. And we also want to know what happens as x goes to minus infinity. What happens when x becomes a really, really big negative number. So what we just learned is that the only thing that really matters for determining the end behavior is that leading term. We can ignore all the rest of this stuff for the purpose of determining the end behavior. That stuff's still important, but for the end behavior it doesn't really matter. So what happens as x goes to infinity? Well that means that we, what we have looks like negative 2 times a big positive number raised to the third power. And when I take a big positive number and multiply it by itself three times, the number just gets really, really big and stays positive. So I've got negative 2 now times a really, really big positive number. And since I'm multiplying a negative by a positive, what I get is a big negative number. And that means that as x goes to positive infinity, f of x is going to go to minus infinity. And that's our answer for the first part. Let's do the same analysis for the second part. As x goes to negative infinity, that means x is a big negative number. So we have negative 2 times a big negative number to the third power. Now what happens when we multiply a big negative number by itself three times? Well, when we multiply big numbers by themselves, they get really, really big. So it's negative 2 times some kind of big number. And it's a negative times a negative times a negative. I'm multiplying it by itself three times. So when I multiply three negative numbers together, what I get is negative. So this is negative 2 times a really big negative number. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So this turns out to be a big positive number. And that means that as x goes to minus infinity, f of x is going to go to positive infinity. And that's our answer for this part. So that's the idea. Look at the leading term, think about what happens when x is a big positive number, and think about what happens when x is a big negative number. Okay, now we need to think about the roots. So when we've got a polynomial that's factored, in this case this one was already factored for us, it's easy to identify the roots of our polynomial. So the roots of our polynomial are the values of x that we would want to plug in that give us a y value of 0. And since we've got a factor of x minus 2, if I plug in x equals positive 2, that means that's going to be a root. If I plug in x equals positive 2, this part will be 0. And it doesn't matter what the rest of these things are, anything times 0 is 0. So that gives me one of my roots of my polynomial. Similarly, because I've got a factor of x plus 5, another one of my roots is negative 5. And since I have a factor of x minus 8, another one of my roots is positive 8. So those are my three roots of my polynomial. But notice the powers here. The fact that the x minus 2 was squared wasn't important for the purpose of whether or not the number 2 was a root of my polynomial. But it turns out that that power of 2 there, 
This power is important, and it's what we call the multiplicity. So this root 2 here has what we call multiplicity 2. So multiplicity because of that power of 2. This root negative 5 here has multiplicity 1. It only appears once. In other words, it's only a factor once in my polynomial. And this root 8 over here has multiplicity 3. I've got three factors of x minus 8, and so that has multiplicity 3. So how does the multiplicity affect the shape of the graph? Let's talk about that next. The general principle is that if r is a root, so it's one of those three numbers, in the previous example we had 2, negative 5, and 8, so if r is one of those numbers, and it has multiplicity k, then what happens is that when we zoom in on the graph near that value r on the x-axis, so we zoom into the place where the graph crosses the x-axis, the graph is going to look like the power function x to the k at that point. Maybe flipped upside down, but it's going to have the same general shape. So if my root has multiplicity 2, my graph is going to look like a parabola there. If my root has multiplicity 1, my graph is going to look like a line there. So let's see how this helps us. The consequence of that is that if the root has odd multiplicity, so if that multiplicity is an odd number, the graph crosses at that root. And if the root has an even multiplicity, then the graph touches there. And that just has to do with what those power functions look like. All right, let's put this all together. So we have a polynomial here. It's factored for us. That's convenient. Let's see if we can get a picture of what this looks like. So here on the set of axes, I'm going to think about the end behavior, and I'm going to think about the roots, and then I'm going to put all that information together to get a graph. So remember that for the end behavior, we need to think about the leading coefficient. And since the polynomial is factored, it's not immediately obvious what the leading term would be. So if I think about what would happen if I were to multiply this polynomial all together, I don't actually want to do that because that would be a lot of nasty algebra and take a really long time. But if I think about what the leading term would be, what the highest power of x would be, well, because this x here has a power of 1, this x here is being raised to a power of 3, this x here is being raised to a power of 2, if I were to multiply this all out, I would get x to the 6th. And because all of the coefficients of x inside the parentheses are just 1s, that means that I would get x to the 6th multiplied by this 3 that's out front. And so my leading term of this polynomial would be 3x to the 6th. And there would be a whole bunch of other junk after that. But remember that if we are only interested in the end behavior, then we only care about the leading term, which in this case is 3 times x to the 6th. Okay, so now what happens when x is a really big positive number? Well, that means that when x is big and positive, x to the 6th is 6 positive numbers all multiplied together, so that'll be positive, and then I multiply that by 3. So when x is really big and positive, my function is really big and positive. So I'm just going to put a big arrow over here, indicating that when x is big and positive, y is big and positive. What happens when x is big and negative? When x is over here near negative infinity, then x to the 6th is 6 negative numbers all multiplied together. But those negative numbers, the negatives are going to cancel out in pairs. So when I multiply 6 negative numbers all together, the result is going to be positive. A negative times 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 a negative, I think I said that 6 times there, that's going to be positive. And then that big positive number is going to be multiplied by 3. So when x is near negative infinity, my y is once again near positive infinity. So on the ends of my graph, at the edges of the x-axis, I've got a rough picture of what my graph looks like. What about in the middle? Well, that's where the roots come into play. And this function has three roots. Positive 4, that's because my function has a factor of x minus 4. I've got another root at negative 2, that's because my function has a factor of x plus 2. And the third root is positive 2, and that's because my function has a factor of x minus 2. So those are my three roots. What does the graph look like at those roots? Well, let me work from the bottom up. So as my function is coming down from positive infinity, it's going to get up to negative 2. And what's going to happen here when the graph hits the x-axis at negative 2? Is it going to cross or is it going to touch? Well, the answer to that question is based on the multiplicity of that root, negative 2.
Since x plus 2 appears as a factor three times, that means my root has multiplicity 3. And that means that my graph looks like y equals x cubed at that root. In other words, my graph is going to flatten out and then cross the x-axis and then keep going the other way. Another way to think about this is that since the multiplicity was an odd number, multiplicity 3, that means my graph has to cross the x-axis there. But now at some point the graph has to turn back around and get back to the x-axis because positive 2 is also a root and so the graph is going to hit the x-axis at that root some way. Is it going to touch or is it going to cross? Well, my factor x minus 2 appears twice, so my root has multiplicity 2. That means my graph looks like y equals x squared there. Or in other words, it's going to come up, touch the x-axis, and then turn back around. My root has even multiplicity, and that means my graph just touches the axis. Finally, the graph has to turn around again because it has to hit the x-axis at x equals 4. What's going to happen there? Is it going to touch or is it going to cross? Well, my root at 4 has multiplicity 1 because my factor x minus 4 only appears once. So that means that my graph looks like y equals x there. In other words, it's just going to cross. It's not even going to flatten out. It's just going to cross through the, the axis. And so my graph looks something like this. And then it meets up with the end behavior that I found earlier. So that is a very rough sketch of what this polynomial looks like, but it's the general idea. So this root had multiplicity 3, so my graph flattened out and crossed. This root had multiplicity 2, so my graph flattened out but then turned around the way it came. And this root had multiplicity 1, so my graph crossed there.